All right, Keith. Okay. Is the uh, screen up on everyone's uh, monitor? Can you see the uh, worksheet? No, away. Uh, okay, I, you cannot, so I'll have to make sure I share that. So let's see here. How about, how about now? You guys see a screen? Yes. Worksheet? Good, yes. okay. All right, so what this is, is telling us, uh, this came in uh, with <coughs> revenues and expenditures uh, as shown for the mayor level. We had a, a use of uh, 2.259, uh, 2,259,000 and 49 cents. And uh, these are the items that we've identified thus far. I can go through them one at a time here in a minute. Uh, we, had, we normally have a maximum target of in the neighborhood of 1.6 million. Um, so we're, we were over before we made an exception because we made a transfer of 570,000. So we're still over our normal targeted variance of a, uh, by about 103,000 before we make any uh, additional adjustments. So that just gives you an idea where we are in the big picture. And then we have uh, these items that we've uh, brought up as, a, uh, as, as possibilities. Uh, the, first, the first one I have is, is I know there's going to be a discussion today of the landlord licenses. We talked about putting a procurement, uh, a computer for the procurement at 580. Um, I had these items listed. Uh, as discussion points, training for ACDD, fire pay plan, field op, electrician, field op, chipper, and the daycare program. Uh, <clears throat> since we've met, um, there's been a few adjustments that uh, various departments have uh, uh, wanted to insert to present to you as possibilities that uh, some of them are just uh, errors or adjustments that were discovered later. One of them was uh, part-time for field ops. They had uh, met for 16,848, the same as last year. <laughs> it would, be, it would still be uh, for, uh, compared to last year for what they requested. They just misunderstood the, the, uh, the guidance from the administration. Uh, we had to true up our grant matches as the grants have uh, been continued to uh, develop. And there's three items. There's a net total addition of 18,500 for these three grants right here. So that also was inserted. The good news is, is the mayor's office, we had a typo. Um, so there was 39,000 coming off there. So, so far the sum of those adjustments is a net decrease of 4,200. Uh, and then uh, we've proposed to insert the homeless manager step and health um, for 11,397. And then the fire department, there's been a discussion on the email accounts. Uh, Julia, should I take that out? Is that out now? We don't need to bother with that. Yeah, that can so come I'll out. take that out. So if you guys have any questions about any of these uh, items we just threw at you today on the finance adjustments, I'd uh, be happy to uh, try to answer those. The one thing I know uh, that came up afterwards, and I had some discussion with the mayor about it, was the uh, Chipman uh, contribution to the Chipman Center. Okay. That was 2,500, I think. Wasn't it needs to be added? I didn't, I'd never, well, hold on. Maybe I did see a document from them. Let me, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Yeah, there is a document. I know. Yeah, that. yeah, I came late. That's right. Um, I don't have the attachment, I don't think. Hold on. Ah, here it is. Coming up. Yep, twenty five hundred. I had uh, I had a discussion with Kim this morning, um, seeing if we could help support that since it came in after the uh, 
the date. Um, and we believe strongly that on the advertising side, we have about a thousand dollars that we can uh, take out of our advertising budget. Um, so Keith, if you want to put a thousand in there to offset, um, that's a that's a start anyway. So you want to uh, reduce your advertising by a thousand and put the twenty five hundred in, or yeah. So our net, what's our net uh, differential? What are we short now? Well, this isn't, uh, this was just a, a general guide, gu guideline. I just wanted you to know in the big picture, you know, where, where we stood. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we never, hit, we never hit that number exactly. Just, yeah, just, no, I, it, I, I understand. It, yeah, it's just good to see the, where we are in the neighborhood. Yeah. 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 So, but, I can put that number average. up here so you can see it on a regular basis so you don't have to scroll down there as you make changes. Yeah, the average. That way. Cool. The difference is this year that we really have no clue what's going to happen up front. So um, if we use the same numbers that were the same target number that we've used in the past, uh, we're not that far off. Exactly. Um, I put that note here, like, like this doesn't include the potential effect of COVID. So if that was right. a million, that's a good, <clears throat> could result in a, if, even if we used our normal target, we could easily have a million or more of a withdrawal or surplus. Well, yeah. he, he just, it's a problem that we have. Uh, uh, Sorry, Keith. All right, the, uh, what I, what, while we're waiting for the mayor, um, let's go through the council any questions they have that they made notes on relative to uh, anything that was covered during the previous sessions. Mr. Boda, do you have anything that um, you want to highlight? Let's stay away from the landlord licensing right now until the mayor gets on. Everything else is pretty much fair game. Good morning, everybody. Um, I think uh, in a couple, I mean, what I had on my list was uh some of the items that are that keith has up here and i think you know our discussion about training was a key one and i, I know that they were going to take some time and look citywide to make you know and i know that's going to take some time um but i didn't know if anybody had any answers on the hc hcd training um and i know we had discussed the chipper uh and I, I didn't know if they'd gotten a price on on something like that or not just for um, uh, uh informational purposes not not sure we're gonna we're gonna go down I, I know it's something that we do need and it might be a next year thing um trying to think uh yeah and and I, I, yeah i think that's i think there was that daycare thing also i didn't know if we had found any information out on that on on what we can do with that so i think th those are my main ones that that and, and pretty much what i had was what we put on that list because everything else we had gone through yeah i think that that's that's a certainly all, anything on my list is up on there uh and i think that we're okay um does it do you want anthony or i mean andy or uh, julie you want to comment on any of the um, any of those pieces, especially like the training one? Sure. Um, so there's an exercise that we have with all of our employees. Um, when we go through the budget process that we first ask them to provide essential items, but then we also ask them to um, budget flat as, as much as possible, um, really reflect on their budget see what areas that they might have um, had excess and kind of move monies around. The first exercise that we had with housing community development was to 
find additional funding within the budget to provide additional training. Um, I don't know if that exercise was completed um, completely. So we do believe that there is additional funding um, and additional need for training, just whether it's their department or overall. Um, the question is, do we fund it with new money or do we um, you know, pull out the pencil and see if we have it within the current line items that exist. Um, so there's two different strategies, um, but uh, there is definitely a need for some additional training. Now, the quantity or capacity of training has, has slightly changed with this next year. Um, a lot of high dollar trainings are usually lodging, travel, et cetera. Um, and then in-person trainings. Most of that stuff is already started getting canceled for the first two quarters of the year. So they're reducing or eliminating it down to more of a Zoom meeting. So for example, ICMA, a price tag of $800, maybe like $100. So we may not have to fund the full training amount, but there is definitely a need for some additional training. Um, the exact you, figure. Let me jump in. Um, Everett did email this to everybody after our initial session. Um, and he put an additional price tag of twenty seven thirty one, dollars uh, But I do think Andy's point about, um, you know, some virtual sessions and things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, looking, sharpening the pencil, as he says, uh, could work. So maybe it's someplace in the middle. Yeah. I think the one thing that we, based on the, the whole concept of we don't know where we're going with this COVID thing, I, I think that... Um, the way that I would look at it, my personal opinion is that we should look at mandatory trainings, which are which are mandated by law, and then uh, try to um, look through the look through the documents and get your pencil and eraser out and and see where we are um, going into maybe the second third of the year. Uh, that would be my personal recommendation. Um, because we really don't know what's going to happen. Uh, we can target what where we normally target, and that may not be good enough because we, we may be drawing um, based on what the uh, revenues are uh, from the state and feds. So we'll have to see. Sorry, if, if, if you look at the spreadsheet that Everett shared, um, I've got it up. It's for mandatory training this coming year. It's um, 1390. Yeah. Um, so, you know, maybe it's a thousand bucks or yeah. you know, yeah. a comfortable landing place. Yeah. I think that's a good approach. Um, let's see, April, you're on now. Um, anything on your list that, that is not on that list that Keith went through? Oh, no. Mm -mm. No. Okay. Um, Michelle, anything on your list that is not on that list? No, no, but we everything else was all, everything that I was going to talk about was on there. <laughs> so okay, great. Um, is Daniel on yet or no? Let me see. I don't think she is. Yet. I don't see her. I don't see her. Okay, all right. Um, I guess then we're waiting. We're just waiting to go over uh, the mayor and because um, I know there's some changes that he's got. Yeah. Hey, Andy, do you want to touch on um, our plan for um, with surveys and stuff for the daycare and maybe looking at that as a sure. research and, and getting ready for FY22? Yep. So um, we are in the process or about to um, a little bit of supply and demand. We have to see who would want to take advantage of it, kind of what they're able to pay, willing to pay, and get some feedback. We kind of have a tentative budget that we started to put together, but we want to see who would be utilizing the service. Um, and this is going to take a little bit of time. So our goal would be to have it as part of the budget presentation um, next spring. Um, and as we go through this survey that, that we're sending out to all of our staff, we're going to compile that data and then we're going to have a, a task force or a group kind of sit, digest that information and then start putting some recommendations forward to our group. Um, and Michelle, I know you had showed some interest. We may invite you to be part of that, that group just to give us some of your knowledge and experience. Um, but our goal would be to, 
if we can set it up so that it's self-sustaining, it's just creating a flat line item with some revenues that offset the expenses. If, the, if we go through the process and realize there needs to be some sort of um, subsidy to be able to make it more affordable, that would be an essential item that was presented to council to see if there's an appetite for that. But this is gonna take a little bit of time. We don't necessarily wanna rush through it. Yes, it doesn't help people immediately, um, but we're kind of growing for the, for the future and we don't wanna rush into something like this. And most people aren't even sure what their daycare is gonna be over the next three to six months period. So that, that's kind of the update there. So definitely looking at it, but it's paused right now um, for the discussions next, next uh, budget cycle. Great. It's a shame though that we couldn't do something. Well, I mean, if, if it turns out to be break even, mm -hmm. then you can start at any time. Yeah, we can do a budget amendment and uh, just Get the um, just get the you know the capacity to be able to right. spend it and have the offset. Right. Um, once we figure out how many people are interested, then it is um, securing a, a facility that would be um, suitable for uh, for that capacity and those needs. Um, and then we'd have to negotiate how we'd get into that that space, and then we could start to line up staff and stuff. So we have this um, we have a pretty pretty strong um, objective and. and um, outline of how we want to move forward, but first we need to create um, some demand. But to make it work for a break even, we're, we need anywhere from 15 to 20 participants to make it financially work um, with the overhead um, because of, of staffing capacities and stuff. Um, and while still making it affordable and not matching or being above what current market rate is. So again, if we're right. looking at a sliding scale, um, we need to make sure we can we can do all that stuff. Andy, could yeah. I ask a question? Uh huh. Do we know how many um, employees have children under the age? Do we have any statistics of how many we have? So um, we are sending out a survey. Um, I just saw the final review. We made a couple changes to it. It should be going out this week um, to to poll our entire group. We could figure out how many people have kids. Um, the question is how many would be interested in, you know, have kids and then would be suitable or, or want to participate in this activity. So um, we'll, we'll have those figures here within a couple of weeks. Um, but I don't have an, I don't have an exact, exact number. Well, I, I, I do believe if it's um, reasonable and if it's a lot cheaper than most daycares, I think a lot of employees would be rather happy to um, be a part of the daycare for the city. I really do. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a great idea as well. I, and actually, I've been thinking about it. Um, you know, between the mayor's office and Julia, that's a pretty big area. Um, Good. I, I have around our feet. Please don't even joke. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say the location is always the hardest part, finding the location. So yeah, I mean, well, just set up a temporary there shop. You go. There. Well, you know that is interesting because you know we've we've figured out teleworking. Um, and it, you know, businesses are downsizing or something. So maybe it is, uh, you know, maybe we kick it out of their space and put a daycare over there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There's, there's also a couple well, of things. There's, there's a couple different ways you can look at it. Is it a home-based daycare? So you actually are literally in a house kind of like Newton community center, or is it more of a commercialized space? And then you have to have proximity if you're doing early daycare to what I'd consider outdoor space or playgrounding. Right. So, yeah, the, 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 the numbers, you've got to be able, so say there, say that we do have 15 families who want to participate, you figure that's probably one to two kids per family. You're looking at, say, a, for a child care of about 30 kids, uh, you would need, for square footage for the building, you would need something, <sighs> I haven't checked Comar in a couple of years, but <laughs> you would need something along the lines of 2,500 square feet indoor space and at least uh, 1,500 square feet outdoor space. So, right. yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, finding a location is really honestly gonna be the hardest part, trust me. I, right. I literally it's spent tough. years trying to find a facility location. And if you're doing a home base, you're, you're looking, I mean, if we're talking about just reimbursing people for a home base childcare rather than us running a facility, um, you know, those, 
you can only have up to eight kids in a home based home based daycare. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know how well it would work out, but I think um, you know if we can find a location, <laughs> that's that's mm -hmm. everything. I mean, that's that's going to be the biggest hurdle we're going to have. It's very few okay. places have the, indoor, have the indoor space and the outdoor space. <laughs> Right. Well, I, I think it's important, uh, certainly a priority for everybody that's spoken on the council. So I think that um, that's, a, that's a good, and we have some resources that, that have been through it. So that's, that's great. Uh, Julia, is the mayor on yet or no? He's not, but I got information from Tom on the chipper. Um, okay. Under a state contract, we can get a new chipper for approximately $40,000. And it, you know, it, their argument was that it does break down frequently. Yeah, you know, rent, rent things. Uh, I think the most recent uh, challenge was when a tree fell at uh, near Norm Conway's house, and uh, I think we had to rent a, a rent a chipper as well for that. So, you know, it's a challenge for sure. Yeah. Just That's don't set a chipper around my husband at all because ours broke down. <laughs> it's been an ordeal. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a lot of money. Um, and I understand the need, but I think we got to we got to be a little bit careful. Um, I saw the mayor uh, actually pop up. So, Mr. Mayor, good morning. Good morning. Um, we've gone over uh, a lot of the items that we've had. Uh, so, why don't you bring us up to speed on uh, the items that uh, you have? Proposing changes. So I see that uh, Keith has brought up um, the adjustment uh, worksheet. Yeah, we went over that and uh, we've made some a couple of changes on it. Um, uh, and we're not that far off now, but I, I know there's some changes you want to discuss. So let's. Let's, right. Uh, so, um, Ju uh, let me defer to Julia for a second. Um, did we discuss uh, what what has been discussed so far? Uh, the chipper, uh, the um, council uh, advertising budget, and a contribution to the Chipman Community Center. Okay. All right. Um, well, I do want to make sure. I do want to confirm that. Um, the, uh, the, the partners who we have supported for the last five or six years uh, that they were funded, uh, most of them got their letters to us late for some reason, not, not sure why, but Chipman was not the only one. I think Lower East Mature Heritage Council was late as well. Um, but uh, uh, I just wanna confirm that before, uh, you know, before the budget is finalized. Um, so we may need to do a little review there. Uh, we also had an adjustment that was necessary based on an evaluation of one police supervisor um, and uh, that uh, uh, that person's adjustment, I believe, is uh, something we can accommodate in the budget um, without uh, an adjustment at uh, council level. Um, there is an adjustment needed per a pay plan um, with uh, the mayor's office uh, for one of the uh, mayor's office employees. Um, something that uh, is uh, an agreement um, that was set in place uh, two years ago or uh, over a year ago uh, that we did not accommodate this year. So we'll need to make an adjustment there. Uh, it amounts to a total of $5,000. Um, and then uh, the only other item that I know of is um, the, uh, the uh, rental registration and landlord licensing fee increase, which I know has been a hot topic um, for, for you all. I know you've been lobbied hard on this. Um, you know, I, I believed that um, as a sign of good faith for uh, cooperation, for keeping people housed during um, this crisis, we would also um, show good faith from our end um, uh, through a cooperative relationship through a difficult time uh, with our, our landlord partners. Um, last night, uh, I did not see evidence of that cooperative relationship, um, or I saw uh, 
uh, uh, limited evidence of that. I expected a cooperative relationship. Um, so I'm concerned about that. Uh, you know, I would, I would recommend that, um, uh, and I was going to recommend that it be removed, the increase be removed for this year. While I think it's justified, I think we could remove it for this year and um, take the difference from surplus, recognizing that we're, we know we're going to take a hit and, um, you know, rather than uh, rather than have that back uh, uh, on the private sector you know we'll we'll take the hit um, again for people helping to keep uh, our lowest income residents housed uh, during this crisis um, but I, I think still before the final vote of the council that should be contingent on uh, the cooperative relationship um, of our uh, of our landlord uh, uh, constituents Okay, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, the, the, only, the only thing that, um, that I can say around about the increase in the fees is that to the person that I've been in contact with, they all said they're gonna pass, pass the increase on to their uh, renters. And I, I struggle with that even, you know, I, they need to support us. Um, I do have one question. Well, Mr. Under President, the, if I could. Under if, if the, I, go ahead. If I, if I could, no, they're not because they can't because if you pass the legislation, that would be illegal. They'd be charged with a misdemeanor if they do. Oh, during the during the COVID period, you're talking about. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Um, I one other question: uh, the um, announcement that we made about rent relief. Uh, when somebody applies for that, I assume the process is someone will apply for assistance. Will that check go to the renter? or will it go to the landlord? I'd have to defer to Cheryl Meadows at Salisbury Neighborhood Housing on that, but I suspect uh, that it would be paid to the landlord. Uh, that yeah, it would be- that would, that would be my preference because that would then- um, help the, These are, yeah, and these are existing programs that, that already exist that don't, there, there are, there are procedures for this that already exist um, in past rental assistance programs that are not funded through the city of Salisbury. Uh, so SNHS is the facilitator and they've got the experience with uh, federal and state guidelines on um, the disbursement of monies for rental assistance. Uh, so this would just work um, like uh, any other rental assistance program. Um, and uh, in which case, you know, it's not, it's not just cash, paid to a tenant with the hopes that they uh, fulfill their obligation to their landlord. They'd have to prove the deficit, um, show what it is, show what the, you know, show what the difference is, and, uh, and then it would be paid to their landlord. Okay, could you, could you ask uh, Cheryl maybe to send uh, the, that procedural thing to the council so we can look at it? Sure. So I know you'll be getting the CDBG um, legislation, uh, so it'll come to you. Uh, it'll come to you and you'll have a, a public hearing as well. Uh, there will, there's a five day or there's a five day public comment period. Normally it's a 30 day period. It's five days for the CDBG COVID-19 money. Um, and uh, at that time, we'll make sure Cheryl is available and all of the guidelines are available for your review. Great. Thank you. Yes. Sir. Thank you. Um, so we've gone through this. Keith, um, Mr. Mayor, do you have anything else? No, I don't. Um, Keith, where are we on the bottom? I can't see because it's cut off a little bit. What's the uh, differential now? How close are we to our target? Ninety-eight to thirteen. Keith, you're muted.
Yeah, I just pointed out that uh, I, I, so we don't have to scroll down. I just uh, posted it right up here, so it, it will update real time as we make any changes. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Um, So as it stands now, the 150 is uh, is in there. No, no. So how it how it is is I've got a I've got a list. It's like going to the restaurant. This is what you can have, and then when unless it's in here, it's not uh it's not selected. So gotcha. yeah, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so I don't a, I don't put them in there unless you say to. All right. That's assuming that uh, they're cooperating. The landlords are cooperating. Yeah, if you so, if you take the fifteen dollars out, then I would have to put the uh, reduction to revenues of one hundred and fifty. Gotcha. Okay, fine. All right. Um, any other comments from um, the council members, Mr. Boda? Um, on the landlord uh, issue, um, if you got and i and i know we have you probably have a, a group of people who you know don't follow all or most of the rules um is, is there a way to cre create a system of if you've got you know landlords that hey they're, they're on it they take care of things or if you've got the ones that are not that with these registration fees um, if they're continually violating things, variety of things, are, are, you know, are we able to just like, okay, so this year your, your fees are going to be more, uh, is that, is, is there, is there a program or something we can come up with in that, in that sense? I don't think so. I don't think that's legal since fees can't be punitive. They have to be reflective of the expense. So is there, yeah, so if there's ones that are, is there a way, you know, instead of maybe making it punitive, if they're a good lord, good landlord, are they able to get uh, a discount or something? I'm, I'm just, you know, just the, throwing that out there. Sure, but but the, the downside of that is then you're asking taxpayers, yeah. you know, prop, homeowners and businesses in Salisbury to subsidize landlords for the process of reviewing their registration and uh, licensing applications each year, which I don't, I don't think is gotcha. fair. Okay. That's all. Uh, I have. All right. Thank you. This is Jack. Ms. Jackson, anything? I was kind of thinking on the um, landlord licensing thing, like mirror, but not only on that aspect, but I'm, um, when the uh, Salisbury Neighborhood Housing um, sends the money, is that person, is their name on that check or is it um, an account number or something that they could verify that this money is for the person? And how does the person know that that money's been sent? You'd have to ask Cheryl. I'm sure she'll speak to that. Again, this is exactly like any other federal or state um, uh, uh, rental assistance program. It's mm -hmm. not as if it's money that evaporates or could be um, somehow hidden as not paid. I mean, it's a fairly simple, straightforward, probably a contract that everybody has to sign to receive the money. Well, I, I do understand that, but I'm saying how is it distributed to the landlords? I mean, does is the person's name, the renter's name on it? Or is there an account number on it? If there is an account number, to I'm sure it's just a. I'm sure it's just a deposit into the landlord's account, or a, you know, like a wire or transfer or a check. Okay. To to the landlord. Mr. Mayor, um, I've yeah. I've participated in um, SNHS program when I bought my first house. Um, so I, it's a, it's a grant agreement. There's a, a application you've got to fill out, you've got to sign. Um, so there is a, a thorough process that will document, you know, sort of every stage, um, of the way. So I think, you know, the, the, the renter will know, um, that it's been paid and, and, and I think it should be probably crystal clear, clear for them. 
That's what I wanted to know. Thank you, Julie. Mm -hmm. Ms. Blake, anything? She's not on yet. Okay, uh, Mrs. Gregory, anything else? Uh, no, I think it's been said. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, all right, I, I guess this is what this, the, the outstanding item that's up, that's up there now is um, the 150. And, and based on how the meeting or how the input is from the landlords is going to before the adoption, uh, that's how we're going to base our case. Is, is and I just want to check to make sure that everybody's okay with that approach. That currently it's in there, but uh, I mean it's not in there, but it might be. So we're talking about 150,000 uh, more or less uh, from the total that appears now, depending on which way it goes. Um, Mr. Boda, you, how are you feel about that? When you say you're depending on <clears throat> people's response, I'm trying to gauge what what is meant by that. Well, I'm assuming that the mayor is is in has been in discussing this with I know he has with um, a group of the of the uh, landlords, and um, you know we're we're seeing it's behavior says a lot. Yeah. And I think that um, the mayor can speak to it and maybe he wants to now or not. Uh, but we still are seeing evidence of behavior that doesn't go along with what's being said. Is that fair to say, Mr. Mayor? While we were in last night's meeting, while we were there, while people were expressing, you know, nuanced opposition to uh, the proposed um, efforts by the city to stop people from being illegally evicted and to uh, illegally removed from their properties and stop people from being uh, taken advantage of during this crisis. Companies that were represented by the individuals on the call who were speaking to you were actively notifying their tenants that they had to be out by Friday and that their locks would be changed. They knew they were breaking the law when they did it. They were doing it last night during the meeting. We have evidence that it was happening last night while the meeting was going on with people who were on the call. I cannot stress enough that the city uh, attempting to recognize the financial burden on landlords and be a good faith partner by reducing a proposed justifiable increase to a fee for service rendered is not something that we should do for an industry that is not living up to the values of our citizens, that is not living up to the values they express to us and behind, the ba behind our very backs are doing the opposite. Um, and I don't think that uh, if our so-called partners uh, will uh, refuse to act in good faith, I don't think that uh, we should be doing favors. Um, so. Uh, it's important that um, the legislation discussed last night uh, be passed. Uh, I think if we have true partners who are there, you know, saying we, we also don't want to create homeless people. We also don't want to put that burden on the taxpayer, uh, that we want to do our part uh, responsibly and comply with the law. Um, and we don't want to pass on increases to rent during this period of time, recognizing the uh, undue economic stress everybody is under, um, then I think absolutely now is the time for us to be uh, taking extraordinary measure, measures like not implementing a proposed justifiable, uh, quantifiable increase. Um, I, I think the alternative is uh, proceed and uh, proceed uh, boldly forward on all fronts. Um, so, you know, I think it really depends on who we're working with. Um, the companies I'm talking about uh, will uh, receive notice today um, you know, that, with, that they violated the law, not uh, city law yet. Um, the city will work on that, but they violated state law um, and, uh, and they're going to have to deal with the consequences. I've personally called every landlord who we've been notified by. They've all expressed remorse or shock and 
uh, that they didn't know that it was illegal. They didn't know they couldn't do that. And, um, you know, last night, while people were telling us to our faces, oh, we know that's illegal. It should never happen. And not only that, not only do we know it's illegal, uh, but those people should be punished. Those very same people talking to us, many of them, were actively notifying their residents they had to get out, and they had until Friday. And we've got documentation of it all. So it's frustrating. Has um, this been reported to, I mean, who's monitoring that at the state level? I couldn't tell you. Uh, we can certainly share it with the attorney general. But uh, so, I mean, cause I, I if, it's, if it's the governor's executive order, and, and they're violating no. it. I don't nope, they're not violating uh, the, uh, the, the governor's ecu- executive order. They're uh, violating due process, actually. Um, so Well, if they're, they're evicting somebody, n- that is a violation of the governor's no, order. Because no, no, he said no, no evictions. Not. No, no, it is not. That is not what the governor's order says. The governor's order says the courts cannot be used for evictions because the courts will be closed. And the, oh, okay. and the reasoning behind that is, is uh, you know, uh, has to do with, um, not wanting to interfere with a contract by saying you cannot tell someone to get out. Um, what we are doing is saying that you can't remove them um, and creating uh, a city infraction as a result of that, but they already can't remove them. Uh, it's yeah. illegal to remove somebody from your property without a court order. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know who would punish that. I don't know who would, um, but we've got, you know, probably, gosh, just in the last week, another dozen examples. Last night, three more uh, examples during the call that we were on. And again, with people who were on that call talking to us. Mm. Um, so look, I, I, I just don't think that, um, you know, the city should uh, take a financial hit to our reserves on a, a justifiable increase um, to a fee for service if uh, the people and industry that you're trying to assist, um, recognizing their own financial impacts and wanting to be sensitive to that, um, are literally trying to place a burden of new homeless people onto the taxpayers. It's indefensible. It's indefensible. It shouldn't happen. It's immoral. And anybody who wants to challenge me on that, I'm happy to debate in you know, uh, the public square. But th- th- this, is, this is not acceptable. Um, I don't think we should stand for it, and I don't think we should be doing uh, favors uh, if they're going to fight us on this. Okay. I, but I do, I, I I do recognize, just, yeah, I do recognize Probably. the value in uh, in helping people out financially by not imposing a fee increase at this time. But again, uh, I think that's incumbent entirely upon whether or not we have people that are uh, not going to put the burden of new homeless people onto us and the taxpayer. Or if we have people who are going to, uh, rather uh, in a rather underhanded fashion, as evidenced by last night, um, do exactly that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, with that, you know, and you know, and I and I've heard a couple of things as well. Um, I mean, I'm comfortable leaving the increase in. Okay, there's other council members. I mean, they have their own. Um, any other council members, Ms. Jackson, you want to add to that? Uh, you know, it's kind of bad because <laughs> you, we end up infringing and hurting the, the good landlords and the good realtors. Um, if they're complying with whatever is going on and I'm like you, Jack, this is going to be passed on. Even if you, we think it's not, they're going to pass this on to the tenant. But if they but if they do pass it on, I understand uh, that. But how will we know that? Well, uh, how do we know of all of the violations that we know about today? Yeah, but you know what? A lot of people won't call. A lot of people are afraid because a so, lot of people will be afraid that they're going to get be evicted. Period. And a lot of people. Let me let me let you understand. Now, in my in my district. I hear this all the time. People are afraid to say anything in fear of eviction, even if they do, even if they know that they can't be, some, most, a majority of them will still be afraid to say something. Now, for those who are saying something, that's because they do know their rights. But for like some of the elderly people who are living in some of these 
places, they're not gonna um they're not gonna understand that. They're they're I, I've dealt with this many a times. I've so I've let, been asked. Let me do you let me do you a favor and point you to the legislation that was proposed in the accompanying executive order. The legislation requires that within five business days of the passage of the legislation, every tenant in the city of Salisbury receives a letter drafted by me and they must receive it now in hard copy form per the legislation. They must receive it within five business days, every single one. Each instance of a landlord not providing their tenant with that letter is itself a misdemeanor. We will insist that that letter be provided in writing, posted on a door, slid under a door, or in a mailbox. That letter will say, do not leave your apartment. You are not evicted, even if you are notified. You, you do not have to leave whether or not someone tells you you have to leave. The only circumstances under which you will, uh, should leave is if a court orders you to. It's going to be, I think, one of the most important parts of this uh, legislation uh, is, the, uh, is the requirement of notice, uh, the requirement for notifying tenants of their rights. I think that is one of the most important things because, as you said, uh, people don't know their rights in many cases. And so that, that notice is going to be the critical step one to this process. Oh, Mrs. Gregory, anything to add? <laughs> I mean, I think everybody pretty much can gather what my opinion of it is, but, um, you know, these landlords are sitting here and, and pleading for mercy that they would not show their tenants if given the chance. And I just, last night, <laughs> the, even the, knowing that, that Jake had been talking to them and telling them, hey, we're willing to work with you if you work with us. And then they still dogpile in our meeting in the comments um that infuriates me and now knowing that while they were doing that they were still trying to evict people hmm, to quote clue flames on the side of my face um i, I just it, it, it makes me angry and um I'm not inclined to work with them at all at this point. So, you know, I would I would be happy to support the, keeping the fee in. Okay, thank you. Um, Good morning, I, Angela. You I I did I did join, and I'm sorry I was late. Um, I had a student um, at school. I had to take care of something urgently first thing this morning for a student in crisis. So I joined as soon as I could. Um, I'm, and I apologize, I'm just getting in on the back end of this conversation. But could someone provide a small recap? I do have uh, an understanding of, of the topic of the conversation, but just a, sm a small recap. Apparently last night there was uh, comments or, or chats or something made in regards to the city council's efforts um, for the new legislation. Is that accurate? If I could, if I could summarize, last night while we were on the meeting, individuals who were on the call had proceeded to send out information to their tenants uh, relative to being out of their place by the end of the week. These were people that participated in the call, and the mayor's point was, um, this is not good faith. And we originally Correct. had considered, we had originally considered uh, removing the fees uh, increase this year because of the COVID situation. Uh, because the fees as they exist do not cover the costs of the, of the, uh, the fee. Um, I, I, sitting here listening and, and having spoken with the mayor uh, last night, um, my opinion is, is starting to, 
pardon. And, and let, me, let me say this. For those people who profess to be working with their tenants and working with us, um, belong to an organization called SOPOA. And right now, I think it is incumbent on the total membership of SOPOA to call the people who are doing these things. And I, believe me, I know you know who they are. And convince those people that either they're going to play ball or the total SOPOA organization will suffer. And when I say suffer, it's not a punishment. This is paying for something that is necessary to pr produce the documents and get the licenses out. So the members of SOPOA, the good members of SOPOA, the, the, the members that walk the talk, get out there and do your stuff because you have a week or two at the most to convince those people to play ball. Otherwise, if you don't do that, then I believe based on what the council is saying that we are gonna pass that legislation with no changes. Correct. And agree. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So I think, I think we've said enough and we've beaten this horse to death. Well, Jack, Jack uh, I, know I, I, know, I know we're all angry. I am, and we have the documentation to do it. So Jack, can I, let's let's stop playing games and let's get the job done. Mr. President. Yes. Can, can I offer one thought on timeline? Sure. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Tillman uh, has uh, provided the timeline for the. Um, uh, emergency passage of the legislation discussed last night and advanced last night. Um, so I think we have uh, five days uh, total, um, not between each hearing, but five days total that, um, that need to pass from uh, the um, advertisement, um, which has not happened yet, to a final vote, um, which would require two meetings in a fairly short period of time. Um, but I, I believe that uh, if that were to happen, and if the legislation were to pass, um, then you know I, I think we could certainly uh, remove the the fee, um, since your vote on the budget is is when twenty six. The first, the first, uh, yeah. Next Tuesday Next is the Tuesday. second reading. Yes. Okay. Or they could happen on the same day. Well, well, I I, I would ask that uh, we. Just think about the mechanics of building the entire budget book and all, all that goes into this. It really today is is we set this as the last day for a good reason. So I would I would encourage everyone to make a decision and um, you could make a budget amendment for that year maybe uh, at any time to take that fee away. But I would encourage you to try to strike a budget today. Well, let me just let me let me ask a question. We still, if we pass it on the eighth of June, that would still be, meet our guideline, right? How's it going to crawl into the documents, though, that have been that are due to you on the eighth? You, we, we, I mean, yeah, <clears throat> it it could be processed as a budget amendment easily. I would just make so it's 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 it still accomplishes exactly the same thing. The only thing I'm asking is, should we make it a budget amendment as opposed to a part of the adopted budget? Because we have a deadline for passing our adopted budget of today, as far as uh, getting it prepared for cancel. Daddy. Okay. I, I don't. I don't. I, I don't have an issue. Well, I think uh, what we have to do next week anyway, if if we take this fee out, we have to do an amendment on the ordinance to, to remove the fee. So anything that will be done would have to be done 
at the meeting as far as removing the fee. That's, that's what I was thinking, that an amendment at the table of the fee ordinance is, mm. is what we're talking about. Now, you're talking about the, the, uh, the, the resultant math, Keith, right? Uh, true, yeah. So, yeah, that, uh, that in order to, uh, since uh, the mechanics are today, we, we make our decisions and we then build, there's a lot of uh, processing to build the final budget uh, packet that comes to you in the form of that ordinance. It's not just a matter of editing that ordinance at the table. So what I was recommending, if it, it's no problem if we wanted to do that on the 8th, we might process that um, um, as a budget amendment um, and an amendment to the fee ordinance um, separately. Yet, um, Mr. President. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, go ahead. I, I think you could go either way on this. I mean, you know, what, one way would be to, uh, once again, as, as we've tried to demonstrate, show good faith and say, yeah, we'll take it out, but, you know, we'll add it if, you know, we see this continued uh, behavior, which is, you know, simultaneously uh, unethical and uh, dishonest. You know, we were lied to last night, um, you know, by the people we were talking to, um, by some of the people we were talking to, um, and uh, or uh, to say, you know, uh, no, it remains, and uh, the proof will be in the pudding, uh, you know, with uh, willingness from all council members and the mayor to uh, to remove it um, at the council table. I think I think you could go either way on that. I mean, again, I think you've tried to demonstrate good faith. I've tried to do the same. We could remove it for that reason and try to demonstrate that good faith for now and, uh, and deal with the, uh, the change at the council table, depending on uh, the, the behavior and what we see from here on out. Um, I th again, I think there are, both options are viable. Yeah, I, 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 I like what you just described. I think that that's the way to do it. That'll give us time to see what they're, if they're serious or not. And uh, we can do it um, at the council table. And I think that's probably the appropriate way. Uh, can I interject um, just two, two points I wanted to bring up um, in regards to the subject that I heard last night? Um, I just didn't know if we were going to consider looking at maybe changing some of the language <clears throat> of <laughs> the ordinances or or not I, I don't know and then there was something that um, mr. Cannon brought up that was interesting about uh, the 12 month payment looking like realistically if um, these constituents in these situations could possibly pay even 50 or 75 bucks extra a month towards their back rent um, it could take possibly four or five years to pay off um, was there any discussion this morning about uh, looking at the time frame for um, what is it budget planning or um, for back payment with them adjusting that or drop it because I'm sure they're going to need a time frame to pay but I understood the point of looking at take, take someone to pay it off if in fact they're only paying 50 or $75 uh, a month towards their back rent. There was no discussion about that this morning. Okay. <sighs> well, it, it's, it's the bottom line is I think is that we're in a pickle. And I think that we, we've made good faith efforts to, you know, protect the residents and come up with um, something, you know, an either or, you know, help us out here or we'll reduce the fees. And it seems like, you know, that wasn't received very positively. So I, as much as I know that I'm going to get some backlash on it myself, and I know this is a hard place for all of us to be in. I think we just need to 
go ahead and, and do both uh, in parallel. And then if we need to make adjustments in the, in the future, um, come back and do an, um, an adjustment. I don't know, that's my thought. Well, I, I think the proposal that's on the table of, of uh, making the decision about removal of the, the fee um, is probably the best way to go because it gives us some time to see how the behavior changes. So that would be my recommendation. Um, uh, I'll poll the, uh, the council now to see if we have agreement with that. Uh, Mr. Boda? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Blake? Yes. Mrs. Gregory? Yes. All right, uh, Mark, are you on? Mark is not on, on this. Okay, program. well, you'll, you'll, we'll make sure that, that uh, everything is appropriate in terms of the, uh, the sequence of events. Um, and um, then what we'll be saying today is that this is what we're gonna go with going in. Uh, and um, if changes are made, we'll do it at the table. Okay. Just, Mr. Mayor. Just, just one question for clarity. Is the only change that's going to be made at the table to uh, change the fee ordinance from 75 to 60 and you're just going to let the uh, budget lay as far as the revenues that were in the budget? Is, you're not going to try to edit all of the budget documents at the table, are you? No. No. Just going to change the fee and we'll live with the, the, the deficiency that results. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to change the fee ordinance at the table and we're not going to edit then the budget. We're just going to let the budget uh, lay. Yes. Okay. Just so well, I'm clear, are we, are we leaving it at 60 or are we leaving it at 70 and, and switching, switching if need be? I, I just, I don't think I'm on the same page. We're leaving it at 75 and at, at the table they'll, they'll change it to 60 if they, uh, if they choose to. Okay, just want to make sure. Okay. Um, anything else? Mr. Mayor? Nothing else from me. Okay. Um, Julia, anything from you? Um, for clarity's sake, um, did we give Keith the okay to plug in? Uh, the items we discussed this morning. Um, the thousand, yeah. Uh, the community center. Okay, mayor's office. Mayor's office, over. yeah. Uh, this pay plan for 5,000? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't get a number for, uh, it was something we said about Lower Eastern Shore. Yeah, Keith, we're gonna have to check. I don't know where that lived. I, I think it was in the HCDD budget, the um, Lower Eastern Shore um, Heritage Council. Heritage Council. Heritage. They got a little stipend in the past. I just want to make sure that that's still in there. Yeah. If if the council is okay with it, we'll we'll do the research quickly today to figure out uh, if it was included. Yeah, that's fine. Just let everybody know. Um, I thought probably an adjustment. Uh, should be made for what legislation was uh, discussed last night. Do we do we want to reduce our real property tax uh, estimate by some twenty thousand or whatever to cover the new public safety first responder program? Yes, because that's that would be mandated by legislation. So I don't, I, I don't know what that will be. I'm sure it'll build as people become aware of it, but um, uh, there's some money, 20,000, I think would be the minimum that we would expect. Okay. So I took that away from the revenues. The chipper, we're not gonna touch this year.
I think that's it, right? Because daycares will break even if we do it. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it till next year. Yeah, and did you want to do anything with HCDD training? That didn't get moved over if we do. I, I just say do the mandate because I know it was a little bit more than the mandated number and then uh, you may have to make decisions during the year. Yeah, I think we'll, I think we'll be fine. Do you see anything else? I don't see anything. I don't think so. I think that's, I think that's everything. Keith, you okay now? Uh, yes. <clears throat> All right, could you scroll again a little bit for me? Okay. What is the, what is that speed camera thing on the bottom? Uh, once, once we get all the uh, numbers tallied, uh, we, we have uh, three categories that we put the use of surplus. Uh, first is uh, anything that was used to fund capital items. The next is what we used from the previous uh, year for the police speed camera. Uh, gotcha. I remember. And then, and then operating, we, we do, <clears throat> we do have a limit. Uh, the um, down here says per policy updated in 2010. We uh, were we 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 we're only allowed to uh, use a certain percentage of surplus uh, to fund uh, operating. So we have to take out the capital, and we have to take out the capital that relates to the speed camera in order to see what is left in use of surplus and compare it to that. Uh, that gotcha. But uh, we, gotcha. do, we do exceed that. Uh, when we exceed it, we, we, we try not to exceed it by that more than what our typical variance is. Our typical variance is 1.6, so 1.6 million. So that gives us often a break even. So uh, if we hit the 1.6, we would uh, hope to break even uh, during the year. So gotcha. what, what this is telling us so far is, is, you know, the total use of surplus might be in the neighborhood of uh, 123,000 if things went as planned. Gotcha. Okay. That explains it. Thank you very much. All right. I think, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're, we're in good shape. I appreciate everybody's input. Uh, it's been interesting, um, <laughs> to say the least to do a budget this way. I've never done it. Um, I don't think any of us ever have. So uh, thank you for your participation, for, for also being prepared. And as always, Keith, thank, please thank your group for the preparation. Uh, it's become easier and easier every year, uh, except for our little COVID problem that we've had. But um, thank you. Mr. Mayor, thank you for your and your, you and your staff. Uh, it was a job well done. Uh, I know tough decisions have to be made, and my prayer is that um, after the feds and the uh, state figure out what's going on, uh, hopefully we won't be impacted too negatively uh, during the course of next year. So thank you, everyone, and uh, thank PAC-14 for recording, and um, everybody be safe, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next month, next Tuesday. Thank you, everyone.